You know, it is amazing that Bobby would even show up here after what her husband did to Rick. Amy, I realize that you do not know the meaning of the word, but why don't you try a little tolerance? In addition to which, why don't you gather your facts before you make a judgment? Bobby, I thought you had surgery. Oh, I do. I'm going to scrub in a minute. How are you, Amy? Tolerant. Oh. Oh, that's a good way to be, I guess. I don't know, ask Jesse. Honey, can I talk to you a minute? Oh, Ruby, I've got to scrub. Sure, come on, but literally for a minute. That's all I've got to take. Okay, okay. I, I really appreciate this. <sighs> Honey, I'm so confused. I don't know what to think. Oh, Ruby, I am, too. Rick is an honest man. I'd take an oath on it. I know that. But I just can't believe that the man I married to would make up such vindictive charges, much less release it to the press. Uh, honey, I hate to say this, but I think you're going to have to admit that Brock is lying. I mean, what else could it be? And poor Rick. I mean, now he's got to prove that he didn't do this. Ruby, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to do. Honey, have you... Have you seen or heard anything at home, or maybe seen something that, that Brock didn't know you saw? No, I haven't, and I'm not going to start, Ruby. No matter what, I am not going to start spying on my husband. Of course, you're right. I also know that my husband is not a liar, and he's not a crook. But, honey, he, he was the one who gave the information of the charges against Rick. Obviously a terrible misunderstanding, but don't forget, Ruby, those weren't Brock's charges. Mostly he was quoting that woman that works for him. Honey, he was the one who gave the information to the press. I know that... Ruby, really, I'm sorry. I can't talk about this now. I'm doing surgery. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Brock, uh, commissioner for the record, Mr. Brock did come here willingly. I just love the way you guys put it. <laughs> okay, what do you want? Well, I want you to understand a few things, Brock. Are you aware that uh, it is not only illegal to accept a bribe, but also illegal to offer one? So? So, if that story in the paper is true, then your Miss Blake is guilty of a felony, specifically that of offering a city commissioner a bribe. Oh, come off it. Now, you know as well as I do that that paper made it perfectly clear that she was just trapping Weber. What's more, it's equally clear that Weber was fishing for the bribes. To talk about police work, she did it for you. A civic-minded of her. Now, I suppose this was done with your knowledge and consent. No, she told me after the fact. If I was a dishonest person, all I had to do was shut my mouth my food factory would be operating right now. So, you went to the press after Rick Weber allegedly accepted a bribe from your employee. That's right. I sacrificed my own business as a good citizen in order to do this, you see. If you were a good citizen, you'd have come straight to the police. Instead of that, you went to the press. Now, why did you do that? Well, because if I came to the police, I would have expected the same kind of treatment I'm getting now. Now, let's get back to this employee of yours, Ginny Blake. Now, as I understand it, you had no prior knowledge or no advanced knowledge of this alleged bribe. No. She never told you that she intended to offer Dr. Weber a bribe? Of course not. And why did she do it? Well, she hates corruption. The woman's got real guts, you know? Not a model citizen. That's right. You're aware, I'm sure, that uh, since you were not uh, part of offering of this bribe, nor were you present when it was offered, that at this point your testimony is pure hearsay. Now, is she prepared to testify to that under oath? And is she prepared to swear to all the allegations? You're asking me? I don't know. Why don't you ask her? I'd like to. How do I find her? Beats me. You mean you don't even know where your own employee is, how to locate her? Well, she told me she needed a rest, so I gave her some time off. Now, I didn't even ask her where she's gone. She might have gone to New York. She might have gone elsewhere. I don't know. You realize if you can't produce her, you have no case against Rick Weber. Well, uh, would you consider that a case? Photos that copy of a check for $25,000 made out to Rick Weber. That's right. Jenny Blake made sure she made a copy of it before she gave it to Weber. And she made sure she gave it to me before she left Port Charles. How prudent of her. Oh, you can't be too careful these days. This uh, happens to be a company check. Why not? She did it for business reasons. And she's not back at work. What are you, hard of hearing? That's what I said. Now, look, if there's nothing more, I'll be on my way. Listen to me, Brock. Yeah. You started a real mess here, but I intend to finish it. By the time the dust settles around here, it won't be poor Charles and Rick Weber that looks bad. Oh, yeah? Well, I wish you luck. Because right now, 
It's precisely the city government and Rick Weber that looks terrible. Now, if you'll excuse me, please, gentlemen. subject's inability to cope with the death of his brother Ian stems from the early childhood wish to see Ian dead. A wish reinforced through childhood. The more the subject was made to feel inadequate by the obvious superiority of his younger sibling. Ian always surpassed him, not only in studies, athletics, etc., but by his height, size, good looks, and eventual success with the opposite sex. The subject felt the only way to be first would be to eliminate the competition, ergo eliminate Ian. When this wish was finally granted, when Ian finally indeed met his death, oh, add note, I must find a way to ascertain the truth of the so-called accident, perhaps with Charts? We're really climbing. We haven't hit gold. That's what I love about you, Frisco. You're such an optimist. Realist. I was just trying to give Blackie some advice. You know, reality, all that painful stuff. He might make it. Well, come on, Steph. I mean, the kid may be good, but we don't know if he's got more than a song or two in him. What if he doesn't, huh? What if he doesn't have the legs for the long run, huh? Where does that leave him? I'm more concerned about us right now. What about us? Well, if you're such a realist, then you know that we belong together. Now, before you answer, think. About what? About you and me together, totally, and for the long run. I thought we're supposed to be alone. So did I. A single room in a stupid hotel. Oh, you got company. Oh, I didn't know that's what I was. Matter of fact, I'm glad you're here. Because I got some business I want to discuss with you. You know, the unfinished business we had the other day? I want to finish it today. All of a sudden, I feel like a little fresh air. Oh, don't go. Just a little while. Have fun, kids. Yeah. What do you mean by unfinished business you want to go over? My contract. I don't want no funny business this time either, right? Rick says I'm entitled to a copy of it, and I want it right now. Hand it over. Blackie, why don't you just ask for it? This is it? Mm-hmm. Ask and you shall receive, little boy. No need to be so hard-nosed about it. Thanks. You know, it's funny. I've been lugging that around in my purse for days now. I just keep forgetting to give it to you. Well, that's all right. Wait a minute. Now what? This isn't my contract. Blackie, would you give me a break? Why don't you turn to the last page, okay? Yeah? Is that your signature, or isn't it? Yeah, it's just my signature, but this is not the contract that I signed. Now you're gonna tell me you're a lawyer, right? With all the legal mumbo-jumbo that's in there, you're gonna tell me that you remember what's on every single page? I remember one thing. I had an out clause, all right? We talked about it, okay? Pirelli's got an out clause. Now 60 days he could dump me. What's, what's this? So? So where's my out clause? Someone switched pages on me. Oh, for crying out loud. No, Steffi, come on. I want to see it. Show it to me. If it's there, show it to me, huh? Okay, Blackie. You win. I switched a couple of pages. But it was for your own good. My own good? Come on. It's true. You see, Rick Weber never would have let you sign a contract that didn't have an out clause for you. And Pirelli never would have stood still for any other contract but one like that. Especially knowing that he had a winner on his hands. So you switched pages? Yes, but I did it for you. Look, Blackie, I knew you had star quality. I knew you were going to make it, 
And I was right. I had to get you signed. And that's the way I had to do it, Pirelli's way. Or there just wouldn't have been a deal. Pardon me, Steffi. I apologize for that. That's beside the point. You know, Blackie, if you're still uptight about it, why don't you just tear up the contract? Tear up the contract? Yeah, go ahead. Just tear it up. Forget about it. Just tear it in little pieces. Go on. You're serious, huh? Sure. Tear it up, and you're free. Winning that ski trip is just fantastic. I do, too. I've never won anything before. It'll do you both so much good, especially Grant. When he dropped off the skis just now, he seemed like his old self again. I know. You should have seen him when he went off to get ski wax. He was practically skipping out of here. <laughs> I envy you both so much. That's why you and Robert should come with us. Believe me, I would love to. Then do. Oh, Holly, it would be so perfect if you two came with us. If it were up to me, I'd say yes right away. I mean, you know how bored I've been lately. I've been looking for something to do that's exciting. Then come to Mount Alpine. I don't know if Robert will take the time off. He's got so much work at the moment. And you know how conscientious he is. Even a pol police commissioner is entitled to a few days off. He hasn't taken a vacation since... I don't even remember when. Well, that's it then. Make him go. That's all you have to do. Holly, I know you. I know that you can talk him into anything you really want him to do. Sometimes. Well, this is one of those times. Will you ask him? I'll certainly try. Ah, Mr. Putnam, may I help you? Uh, well, I certainly hope that you'll be able to. I understand there's a travel agency here in the hotel. Is that correct? Oh, a very good agency, sir. Planning a trip? Just a, a brief vacation. I'd like to get in some skiing. I've uh, seen some ads in the newspapers recently uh, advertising a new spot. What, what is that name again? Mount Alpine. It's one of the best ski areas you can find with a top experienced slope. And there's a really first class resort right there at the bottom of the slopes. Yes, I've heard that also. But frankly, I would prefer to be away from all that hectic activity. I'd like something smaller and quiet. Uh, Maybe just bed and breakfast, and, of course, near the slopes. Well, I'm sure there are several places like that. Why don't you see what our travel agency can do for you? I'll do that. You said that they are in the hotel. Oh, yes, sir. Straight down the corridor on your left. I'm sure they'll have just what you want. Well, that's very good to hear, because I have some very specific ideas about what I want. Well, I'm sure they'll be able to take care of you. Good. Oh, enjoy your skiing. I intend to. On All My Children, what do you do when no one believes you, not even your husband? You are convinced that he is innocent. Well, Gil may be a lot of things, but he's not a rapist. I'm How do you know? What do you do when your world's been shattered by your husband's best friend? I'm innocent. You are guilty. And if the police won't prove it, I'm going to. What do you do when only you know the truth? You fight for your life. On All My Children, weekdays. Well, I'm glad you got here so soon. You must be quite disturbed. We're furious. Understandably. Well, we wanted you to know the whole story, most especially about Ginny Blake. Tell me about her. I well, you can sum that up in one sentence. She was a woman who came to us claiming to be Mike's mother. What? And wanted him back. It must have been quite a shock. It was. She even produced the copy of a birth certificate. Authentic? Well, it seemed to be. In fact, we even took recent footprints, I mean now, and compared them, and they compared exactly with the certificate. To make it a very short story, we concluded that she was, uh, in our opinion, Mike's mother. How much pressure did she apply to you? She threatened a court custody battle. Go on. Well, I got down to the wires. We were going to get into that court battle, which is something that neither one of us wanted for Mike at all. Then she suddenly decided to drop it. Did she explain why she changed her mind? Oh, yeah. She, uh, she had met with the three of us at the hospital, Mike and Rick and me. And she said she saw how much we were a family and how he really did belong with us and how she couldn't take him away from that. 
but that she did want to give us money for him because she loved him so much. Mm -hmm. Money for what exactly? Oh, it was to be a contribution to his education. Yeah. Oh, neither one of us wanted that. We told her we didn't want it. But uh, she began to insist, and it got to a point where we thought we had better accept it. Well, she had said she would give up all claim to him and drop the custody suit. Yeah. And uh, she did give you this money, right? Yes, she asked me to meet her at her hotel room, which I did, and she gave me $25,000. A lot of this is all starting to make sense. One thing is very obvious that uh, Mr. Brock is very adroit at setting people up. This Ginny Blake seems to have left the scene as well. Where is she? Well, according to Brock, the poor girl needed a rest. Now, that may turn out to be a mixed blessing. I don't understand. Well, as long as she chooses to stay away, there can be no proceedings against Rick. Well, that's oh. good. Well, as far as it goes, but without her, your name can never be truly cleared. In effect, Brock has one in that he's set out to defame you. Look, I'm sure I could get a photocopy of that check and just swear under oath that it's exactly what it was. It was for Mike's education. Brock turned over a photostat copy of that check to me. Now, it's not going to really help your cause that it turned out to be on a company check. You're right. I remember noticing it at the time. Oh, wonderful. This is just getting worse and worse, and there's just so much we can keep from Mike. Does he know that this Ginny Blake claims to be his mother? Mm -mm. No. No. Even if she is his mother. Too many unanswered questions. All right, how will you get the answers for him? Old-fashioned police work. We dig. Above all, we've got to buy a bit of time. First, we've got to find this Ginny Blake. But in the meantime? Well, there's nothing more you can do. I suggest you go home and try to go about your lives. I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. Well, we're willing to cooperate. Anything that's necessary, just let us know. We'll talk soon. Anytime you say. And Robert, I thank you very much. Appreciate it. So much for being in the public eye. Well, it has quite a few perks. This isn't one of them. Mm -mm. Thanks, Greg. We'll talk. Interrupt, darling, but you are about to be kidnapped. Oh? By whom and for what? By Grant and Celia. And me, too. They want us to go skiing with them, and I would love to go, so please, please say yes. Holly, I'm up to my numbers in work around here. Oh, when weren't you? You can take a couple of days off. What? Please say yes. No, I mean, I can't. I'm, I, part of the work is this uh, Rick Brock business. I know, I just, I just saw Rick and Leslie in the hall. They said that nothing will be happening for at least a few days. Yeah, well, that may be. But um, I've got other cases, you know? All the more reason for you to take a few days off. Just think how fresh your mind will be after a few days away. Yeah, well, it's a great bit of reasoning, but uh, my mind is pretty fresh right now. Could be even fresher after two or three days away on skis. Yeah, what if I bust open my skull? Look, Holly, uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you this, but I don't know the first thing about skiing. Really? Yeah. But I do, darling. And teaching you could be so much fun. Uh, you do trust me as your teacher, don't you? Implicitly. Oh, well, then we're on, aren't we? You know, I never will understand how you can just jackboot your way into my office here and just twist me around your little finger. Is that a yes? It's a yes. We'll go. <laughs> Grant, look. Oh, I've always said you're the best stem turner I've ever met. <laughs> what are you doing to me? Wait a second, what is this? Hey, come on, you're going to smother it. <laughs> no, not quite. But when we are alone together hmm? in our room, then you had better protect yourself. I have absolutely no intention of protecting myself. 
As a matter of fact, this is going to be the best damn vacation we've ever had. On the slopes all day. Hmm. And guess where all night? 